Scott Holiday here and welcome back once again to Plus 2 Wrestling. And I just want to send a big shout out to all the people who've been replying to my previous video. What one match would you show a non-wrestling fan to get them interested in professional wrestling? I've gotten a lot of interesting responses to that one. There will definitely be a follow-up video in the future about that topic. So please continue to give me your suggestions and we will dive back into that topic a little bit later on. But before we can do any of that, we gotta plug in. This very Sunday, February 19th at Studio Z in Blackwood, New Jersey, it is CZW Anniversary 24. Join us for the anniversary of CZW as we will see in a CZW rules match, the godmother of deathmatch herself, Mickey Knuckles, taking on Ruthless Lala. Also, at CZW Limelight, we saw Troy Parker take Griffin McCoy to the limit and then form an alliance with Aaron Ash. So at Anniversary 24, we will see Troy Parker and Aaron Ash take on Griffin McCoy and Matt Quay. Also, we have a 15 minute challenge from Fred Yeha, who can last 15 minutes against the Savage Weight. Not to be outdone, Isaiah Wolf has also brought an open challenge to Anniversary 24. Now, I must say this, February 19th is my birthday. And since it's my birthday, you know, I'm thinking I want to make some sort of an impact. So maybe I step in the ring and take that challenge. Is it going to be me? Am I going to get in the ring with Fred Yeha or Isaiah Wolf at Anniversary 24? Well, I don't want to give everything away, but... I'll give you a hint. No. March 18th at Penn's Landing Catering, it is HTW High Tension Wrestling Spring Breakdown 93. And I have some new matches to announce for this event. You will see in a number one contenders match for the HTW Television Championship, Jet Jagori will be taking on Tommy Vex. But... That title is currently being held by Skyros, but will he be champion after Spring Breakdown? Well, Skyros has quite the obstacle ahead of him because that championship will be on the line as he takes on Edith Surreal. Edith Surreal is coming off a huge victory going back to back at Christmas Trios as part of the Pop Art Flyers. With all that momentum behind her, will she be able to decrown Skyros. The only way to find out is to be there at Spring Breakdown 93. Information is in the links down below. And as a special treat, if you're watching this video thinking, wow, HTW sounds very interesting, but I don't know what's going on. How do I catch up on all the storylines and the past going on of High Tension Wrestling? Well, this Sunday, February 19th, all High Tension Wrestling events will be streaming for free on YouTube. So be sure to subscribe to High Tension Wrestling on YouTube and catch up on the action before Spring Breakdown. As I sit here on my soapbox, it is a few days removed from the Elimination Chamber, and I currently believe the path to WrestleMania, the road to WrestleMania, is pretty clearly paved. We will see in the main event, Roman Reigns defend the undisputed WWE Universal Championship against Royal Rumble winner Cody Rhodes. Now, this does mean that I'm saying that it's pretty clear that Sami Zayn is going to lose in his hometown. But I think it's going to then lead to him reuniting with his best frenemy, Kevin Owens, and he'll go on to team with him and challenge the Usos for the Undisputed Tag Team Championships. And I think if done correctly, that could be your night one main event. I would love it if the tag team titles were made so prestigious that they could main event a WrestleMania. I mean, Dan O'Brien was talking about that a couple years ago. He said him and Eric Rowan were going to do that. 
Could you imagine if that happened? But I think that would be a great little night. First night, you got your tag titles. Second night, you got the Universal Championship. Makes perfect sense. But there is an issue. A lot of people really think, at this point, it should be Sami Zayn. Sami Zayn is white hot right now. He is easily the most interesting thing going on in professional wrestling. And for it to just stop at Elimination Chamber, it doesn't feel right. And a lot of people think he should pick up that win at the Elimination Chamber. And as nice as that would be, the nicely paved road to WrestleMania would then be in shambles. So let's talk about the Sami Zayn problem. Let's say Sami Zayn wins the championship at Elimination Chamber. He then goes on to face Cody Rhodes in the main event of WrestleMania. And don't get me wrong, I think Roman Reigns is great. I think Sami Zayn is great. I think Cody Rhodes is great. Sami Zayn versus Cody Rhodes does not feel like a WrestleMania main event. Cody versus Roman, the unbeatable force versus the prodigal son of the WWE, that's a really good story. Roman Reigns versus Sami Zayn, the forgotten son of the bloodline, that also sounds really good. But Cody versus Sami just doesn't seem to work. So I don't think you can just change plans, have Sami win, and have him move on to WrestleMania to face Cody. I just don't think it's there. Also, what do you do with Roman then? Like, we're not going to have WrestleMania without Roman Reigns at this point. Not after his unbelievable unbeaten streak. He's got to be there, right? So this kind of murkies the water. Now, you could feasibly have Sammy win and then have Sammy fight Roman night one, have him drop the title immediately back to Roman Reigns, and then have him fight Cody Rhodes the second night. But it's not as special. Like, the idea of beating the undefeated Feedable monster that Roman Reigns is, is very special. But being the second person to beat him, having Cody beat Roman after we just saw Sammy beat him, it's not going to mean anything. And if you don't believe me, let me ask you this. Who was the second person to beat Goldberg? You probably know who the first person to beat Goldberg was. It was Kevin Nash. But who was the second person to beat him? Nobody really cared, because the streak was over. I'm thinking it's Bret Hart, but I'm not positive, and I didn't Google it. Like, another thought is Brock Lesnar is the man who broke the streak at WrestleMania. He defeated The Undertaker for the first time. Roman also beat The Undertaker at WrestleMania. And out of all of his accolades now, they don't really bring that up much because it's not as special if we've already seen it happen. So to take it away from Cody, to have Sammy win, just to kind of make some fans happy in a moment, just to try to reverse it later, not the best plan. So what if we don't have Sammy win? What if we have an inconclusive decision at Elimination Chamber, something that would justify Roman versus Sammy night one and the winner facing Cody night two. That sounds nice. We, we all know what's going to happen, though. Like, right now, we're all pretty sure that Sammy's losing. If Sammy fought Roman in night one of WrestleMania, we would know for certain that Roman is going to face Cody in night two. There's no way that we're getting Sammy versus Cody with a night of build. So whoever went first, if say you swap them, say you're like, all right, we'll have Cody go on first. You still know Cody's losing. Whoever's in that first night, you know is losing. 
and that is really going to devalue knight one. So you can't really do that. So what if we add Sami Zayn? What if we make this a triple threat match like we did with Daniel Bryan not that long ago? Again, this hurts a lot of things. One, we've already had Roman Reigns in a triple threat match. Stack them and beat them both. Which, God, could you imagine the heat if he did that again? But I think it's time that we crown a new champion. And muddying the waters by making a triple threat match really hurts things. Like, you don't want Roman's first big defeat to be, well, that's because there was another guy there. I could beat you one-on-one. -on -one. I guess you could, but it's really going to hurt the value of WrestleMania if the real match, the real one-on-one -on -one rematch takes place at Backlash or at Extreme Rules or something. No, you want it to be pure. And also, could you imagine if Cody pinned Zayn? He beats Roman without pinning him and beats the babyface we all love. It's inviting so many problems. It is going to guarantee that Cody would get booed out of the building because we all love Sami Zayn so, so much. So there's not really a good way to do it. And I haven't even brought up the real problem yet. Because the real problem is not fun to talk about, but it's a thing that I think needs to be mentioned because this is going to be a problem moving forward for quite some time based on the way things are looking. And that's Saudi Arabia. So if you don't know, Sami Zayn has never performed at a Saudi Arabia event. And this is because the Saudi Arabia government has forbidden Sami Zayn from participating due to his Syrian ethnicity. Now, there are also rumors that the next Saudi Arabia event is in May. So, a month after WrestleMania. That's not confirmed, but that is the current rumor. It's also been stated many times that they want the championship defended in Saudi Arabia. So they actually can't let Sami Zayn be champion. Granted, I guess he could win at Elimination Chamber, then lose to Cody, and then Cody can defend it in Saudi Arabia, but is that really what we want for the hottest prospect right now? For the hottest single ticket-selling entity in the WWE right now, Sami Zayn. Do we want to make him a transitional champion? Someone that beats Roman so Cody can beat him at WrestleMania? Is that really what we want? No, of course not. And even if that would satisfy you, we need to remember that the WWE is currently for sale. And it was just a few weeks ago that we were all sure it was being sold to Saudi Arabia. And of course it came out that that was not true, but there has to have been a reason why so many people thought it was true. And I'm not saying us as fans, I'm saying the people that reported this. There was one phrase I kept hearing, where there's smoke, there's fire. So there was a reason that Saudi Arabia was believed to have bought the WWE, which means they were this close. And who's to say they're not still this close? And if Saudi Arabia won't allow Sami Zayn to enter their country, do you think they would let him be the face of a company they're buying? It's unbelievable what Sami Zayn has been able to accomplish. St Sami Zayn is smaller than your average wrestler. He's not the jacked guy. He doesn't have the baby face. He's a strange ginger with a beard, and I say that with love. There is no logic behind how popular Sami Zayn has become, other than he is truly an unbelievable talent. Guys like him are not supposed to be on the top of the mountain. 
but he's made it there and he deserves to be there and he deserves to be the face of this company and he deserves to be champion. But you can climb a mountain. You can't climb a brick wall. And the walls are up for Sami Zayn. So that's the real problem right now, is not because they're not willing to rewrite it, not because they can't figure out a good way to do it. It's because their hands are tied. They're simply not allowed to do it. And that's just the one thing we know they're not able to do. What else can't they do for their new buyers? What can they not do? because of their Saudi Arabia shows. It's something that I feel like has been lost in this conversation of fantasy booking and looking forward to WrestleMania. That one little caveat really prevents a lot of things from happening. And I know this took a a turn and I've put on serious voice, Scott, but it's something that's really hurting my enjoyment as we head towards Wrestlemania is knowing as much as we want it we can't have Sami Zayn as champion and I don't know how to solve the Sami Zayn problem but he deserves better and on that somber note thank you so much for watching this episode of Plus Two Wrestling I should have thought of a softer way to land this bad boy, but I, I didn't do that. So what do you think about the Sami Zayn problem? Am I making a mountain out of a molehill or molehill? Molehill? How do you pronounce it? I just checked with Mike. It's molehill. But thank you so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe right here to Plus Two Wrestling so you'll get a notification next time I drop one of these here episodes. And until next time, I hope you... Have a great day.